And we're continuing with this, the 13th chapter of A Gathering of Gargoyles, which is called The Light Bearers. The dust shrimp that Ariel had turned out to be a winged creature once it had metamorphized, and a bunch of them have, gui have guided Ariel, Roshka, and Aaron to a tower with a beacon that Roshka is very confused by because the beacon has something to do with the air of Purrs. The dust shrimp has died in Ariel's hand, like all the uh, winged creatures around them, and it left her a pearl, which all of the others left in the dirt. And now there is a figure within the shadow of Ariel's shadow. She heard Roshka behind her cry out and scramble to his feet. She threw out a hand to keep him back. He and Erm, he and Aaron, were both beside her, higher on the slope. Their shadows did not fall as far. The tower looming above them cast no shadow on the rise. The lamp wings all had fallen now. Ariel's shadow stretched before her like a road. The figure at the end of it stepped forward slowly, keeping to his shade, keeping to her shade. It wore rags of what had once been finery. Its skin was gray as dead wood, colorless. It held one arm across its eyes, hiding them from the light. With the other hand, it groped ahead of it, seeming to sense Ariel's shadow by feel. Whenever its fingers neared the light, they drew back. The black wings draping its shadow stirred. It took another step. Roshka threw himself flat to the ground, pulling Aaron with him. She saw their shoulders shrink. A Ariel, he cried. Get back. Get down. It follows your shade. I know that, Roshka. The steadiness of her own voice surprised her. It's the surf! Or it's the seraf! Aaron screamed. We must fly! Where to? asked Ariel. She did not turn. She did not take her eyes from the creature groping toward her. A quarter of the night remains. It is three dozen hours since Sol since Solstar rise. Till Solstar rise. We stand in the brightest light there is, and still it comes. She felt very cold and strangely immobile, too exhausted to flee another step. Her limbs felt as though they were turning to dust. It has found me by, sh by my shadow. There is nowhere left to run. No, whispered Roshka. Come away. You too must flee, said Ariel. It has not come for you. She saw Aaron's shadow on the ground lengthen suddenly, heard the dark girl scrambling up. I will not let it take you, she panted. Let it have me instead of you. Her shadow darted caught something from the ground. Ariel heard a stone whistle past. She saw it gash the dark angel's arm. The creature did not flinch, did not react in any way. Its gray-white flesh refused to bleed. Aaron, no! Ariel heard Roshka cry. She could not take her eyes from the gray thing before her. The shade of Roshka's hand caught Aaron's wrist. Their shadows struggled. The dark girl seemed to be trying to rush forward. The dark angel came on. Oddly familiar, it was so like that other dark angel she had known, who had caught, who had carried her away from the steeps of terrain. The Icarus, that Icarus had been beautiful, strangely vibrant, otherworldly fair. Aaron was screaming now, Roshka shouting above her screams. Don't look at its eyes, Ariel! They say it can kill you with its eyes! One arm still flung across its face. Ariel saw it grimacing, as though even the little life that reached it, that reached it in her shade was painful to look at. The other arm groped for her, its black wings poised. She remembered vividly that other dark angel spreading his wings to her upon the steeps of terrain to reveal a face so beautiful she had lost all nerve, all will, and would have fallen before him, begging only to serve him and die. The seraph of peers stood within reach of her now, still in shadow, she clutched her walking stick to her heart. She clutched her walking stick, her heart sick with pounding, and wondered if the seraph's stare would kill her before she could land a blow. The creature took its arm from its eyes. For a moment, the lids remained closed, and Ariel saw with a start that its face was gray, more skull than flesh. All muscle had fallen away under transparent skin. Slowly, the Icarus opened its eyes, colorless, strangely flattened like a fish's or buttons of glass. Only the pupils were black. Deep seemed to go, 
were black, deep, seemed to go down forever into darkness. For an instant, she almost felt she could grow lost in them, floating in their emptiness until she too became nothing. But the moment passed. After, a after Ariel found herself strangely unmoved, no tug of power now, no surge of weakness in her limbs. Not even fear moved in her anymore, only revulsion, for unlike the young, unfinished Icarus that she had saved in Averick, this was a true dark angel, an empty thing standing before her now. It had no soul. The creature fixed its, its gaze on her. Ariel jerked her staff up, holding its heel first like a throwing stick. The creature's expression changed suddenly from snarl to frown, then blank surprise. It grimaced then, staring at her, its lips parted. It opened its mouth, and then it screamed. The dark angel threw its arms up in front of its, of its face, ducking as though the sight of her eyes were too hideous to bear. It shrieked and wheeled away from her, choking as if the air about her were somehow poisoned to it. Ariel stood frozen, her walking stick half raised, motionless in surprise. The witch's son stumbled away from her, down her shadow's path, its black wings beating erratically. When it reached the end of her shade, it leapt from the slope, pinions thrashing. They caught their rhythm now at last, carrying it aloft. It sped away through the hills, its screams filling the night. At last they faded. The air settled again, dark, fluid, and cool. The valley grew once more still. When Ariel found that she could move again, she put down her arm. It seemed to dangle from her shoulder. Her walking stick hung loosely in her hand. The prince came up behind her. You said you were no sorceress. She shook her head, still gazing after the Icarus, though he was long gone by now. I am not. You banished the serf, cried Roshka. What did you do? Again, she shook her head. Nothing. I looked at it. She turned away and went past him, past Aaron. The dark girl gazed after her. Ariel sank down beside the tower, pulled on her traveling cloak, for she was cold, very cold. I have no shadow, she whispered suddenly. She searched the ground for it, but could find it nowhere. Her head throbbed dully. She could not understand. I have no shadow any more. Aaron had gotten to her feet. What is this place? She demanded, this tower. She spoke to Ariel, but it was Roshka who answered. We call it the torch, and it marks the road to terrain. Once it blazed, they say, with a light like soul star, but it grew dim over the years because people no longer traveled the roads on pilgrimage. He broke off a moment, gazed upward. Now it is lit again. A thought stirred in Ariel. When I came across the sea of dust, she said, I landed at a tower like this. Its keeper told me there were many such, all connected somehow. So that what fed one flame fed all. She remembered the apricot seed he had cast into the light, making it blaze. Roshka was speaking. But the seeing woman said that all peers was in darkness because of my uncle and his seraph. The light would never return, she said, till the right heir returned. I thought she meant returned to power. I am the right heir, for my sister is dead. He looked at Ariel all at once, very hard, his green eyes wide and searching. She gazed at him, and he snatched his gaze back suddenly. She knew what had come into his mind just then, as surely as if she had thought it herself. The silence around them was cool and still. Then the night wind rose, stirring the air, sweeping the dead lamplings away. They lifted and swirled like transparent leaves. Only the pearls remained. Weariness crept over Ariel. She leaned against the tower. I must sleep. She closed her eyes, lay down, rested her forehead against one arm. She heard the prince exclaiming suddenly, Pearls! Aaron, look! As though they had only just noticed them. Aaron came, kneeling by Ariel. The dark girl touched her and said something, but Ariel was already drifting into sleep. When she awoke, it was to see Roshka gathering pearls. He had taken the turban from his head and tied the corners up. His hair was short and fair. Aaron was helping him. Why are you doing that? Ariel asked, sitting up. These are seed pearls, Roshka said. They are lampwings eggs. The prince shook his head. The light bearers spring from the sea of dust. There are no young within these pearls, only mineral salt. Corundum, Ariel said. We must gather them, said Roshka, and take them to the high families, where these pearls are sown. 
the land will grow fertile. When where these pearls are sown, the land will grow fertile again. Aaron left off gathering and brought Ariel something to eat. Ariel sat munching the dry, bitter lichen without interest, when abruptly she stopped, shielding her eyes. Gray figures appeared upon the valley side, not human. They were four-footed. My gargoyles, she cried. Grayling and Catwing bounded toward her down the slope, their strangely jointed limbs flexing and buckling, their skeletal bodies moving with an eerie grace. The other figure held off, mincing skittishly, a nest of horns upon its head. Mooncalf, Ariel called to it. Mooncalf! Then Grayling and Catwing were upon her, panting and rolling and nipping each other. Ariel knelt, ran her hands along their bony hides. They yipped and whined. Dry blood was on the Grayling's lip. On one of the Catwing's paws, Ariel halted suddenly. What have you done? she whispered, taking the Grayling's head into her hands, and then the Catwing's paw. What have you done? The blood was old and not their own. They have brought us a mount, cried Roshka. He whistled. <whistles> Ariel looked up and saw the moon calf descending the slope, herding before it a tall black horse, saddled and bridled, but riderless. It whinnied at the prince's cry. Nightwalker! The moon calf skittered away, but the suzerain's mount came on, nuzzled the prince. He stroked the long crest of its neck. Nightwalker, my father's steed! Moon calf! said Ariel again softly. Aaron stroked the other two, picked the blood from their fur. The moon calf came nearer, approaching at last. It touched its gray nose to Ariel. Roshka bit the bit, or Roshka took the bit and the bridle from the horse's mouth, the saddle from its back. Nightwalker will carry us when we go, he said. The high families lie north of us now and a little east. Ariel did not reply. She let the horns, or she let the hours of the fortnight pass in silence. She turned her, ba she tuned her bandolin, thinking of the maiden's rhyme, and wondered how far it was to Orm. The heron disappeared into her staff, saying she was weary and would rest. Roshka gathered his pearls to fill Nightwalker's saddlebags. Aaron foraged for stone-like water wards. Ariel collected seeds and lichens for their food while the black horse and the moon calf grazed the barren valley side. Disappearing from time to time, the other gargoyles seemed to do their own hunting. The fortnight passed. At last, dawn broke in a white glare down the valley's length. The light of the tower grew dimmer in comparison. Roshka saddled and bridled Nightwalker. Why do you stare at me? Ariel asked him at last. She sat turned a little away from him, sipping the, sipping from a stone wart. You have been gazing at me ever since we came to this place. The prince quickly cast down his eyes. He tightened Nightwalker's girth. I did not mean to stare. You think I am she, don't you? said Ariel. Because the torch is lit. Because I have green eyes, she looked at him. The suzerain thought I resembled your mother. The young man gave up his pretense and adjusted his girth, and adjusted the girth. Your hair, he said softly, and your skin are very like mine, though greatly more pale. Your voice is like mine, your build. He came around the black horse then, even your name. My name is Ariel, some slaver's name for you, Roshka exclaimed. Your own name is Errol, my sister's name. Bomba gave me my name, Ariel answered more forcefully than she had meant. My old nurse in the syndic's house, I loved her well. She fell silent a moment. Your sister is dead. And we will pause there.